Hi, welcome back. My name is Lilia, and today I really want to talk about that transition from being a interior design intern to a junior interior designer or entry level interior design position. I was a summer intern for All America Line during my junior to senior year, and I did get school credit because you have to have a summer internship to as a requirement for graduation. Today, I am really excited actually because it's gonna be actually my friend joining us. She was in my studio and she was just really honest about her experience as a intern and really helped me understand what it looked like and just learning about what her firm does and what she does. And now that she is an interior designer, I'm really excited for her to come talk about her experience and her transition from an intern position to a interior design position. But I do wanna to touch on the fact that I, I know a lot of internships this summer due to COVID didn't happen. Anyone who is experiencing that because I know how valuable a summer internship is. You just get to test so many different things out. Like you can try some type of design and either you love it or you hate it, but you're not stuck there. Or you get to learn about a firm size. It's just so valuable to have that um, professional experience right before you graduate. So you feel a little bit better about where you want to apply to after graduation. So I really want anyone who is in that position, um, please ask any questions in the comments. Or if you are actually a, have experienced that transition from intern to junior interior designer or even working your way higher, please, please, please comment any of your advice you have for anyone looking to work your way up or your experience from moving up in the interior design industry. It will be really helpful for not only anyone watching this video, but also for me as well. I really want to learn from you. So without further ado, let's welcome my friend Haley. Thank you so much for being here today. So can you just share um, your journey of how your career is up until this point? When we were juniors, we were told, hey, you have to go get an internship, which is a little scary at first, not going to lie, and I'm sure it was for a lot of people because it's like, now you kind of have to step into the real world, and I had worked retail since I was 16, so doing something different was very scary, but when we were told that, I immediately started looking as early as I think like December just to like see what I wanted to do and I was looking around at a bunch of different firms really quickly found out that I think I wanted to do something along the lines of hospitality whether it was a firm that was just hospitality or a firm that maybe did a lot of different things and I could do hospitality and possibly bounce around if like I wanted to first I made my portfolio I think I finished that I wanted to say over winter break just because I wanted to be ahead of the game or at least as ahead as I could be then I started applying. I applied to, uh, I don't remember how many, but I applied to just anywhere that really was of interest to me. I went through a bunch of different interviews, all super different. Some were more portfolio focused, some were more resume focused, some were like kind of a good mix of both. I got my first offer at the end of March, because I remember I started April 1st, and I worked full time as an intern through the whole summer of 2019, I believe that would be. And then when school started, they said, hey, we want you to keep working for us. Just work uh, part-time while you're in school, give us your schedules. Like, if, you know, we worked out a pretty good schedule for me, like when I would come in, when it worked best for me. Um, and they were super flexible with my hours. And they were, you know, as long as I told them like what my hours looked like, they were totally okay with me uh, being able to just do what I can because they understood like school, School's important, you know, we want you to graduate. <laughs> so, um, so then I worked through school through my senior year um, at the same place still as an intern. And then I wanna say towards the end of March, beginning of April, I believe, is when they offered me the full-time position at the firm as a full-time interior designer. And I loved my internship so much and I loved the company and where I worked and what I was doing that I accepted. So I'm currently a full-time interior designer. Yeah, so do you want to just talk a little bit about um, your experience with just being a intern? Maybe talk about what you did during the summer. I was put on a kind of a variety of different projects, just depending on like 
who needed help in what area. I was very open with just taking whatever opportunity I could to help it because I knew that it would better my learning. I would kind of get more acquainted with like different kinds of projects. My office in general focused the most on hospitality. And then there was a couple of different projects in and out, but it's mostly hospitality. And since the beginning of my internship, there was like one major hospitality project that they kind of put me onto to help into designer uh, for most of my time. So I did kind of get to see the project had already started. Um, it was still somewhat in the early phases, um, but I kind of jumped on. I did a lot with construction documents, um, kind of setting those up, um, helping the interior designer order dishes, uh, set up the different room types, stuff like that, uh, which is a lot of what I do now. I'll get to that too. Uh, but I did bounce around to a couple different projects, um, just helping where I can. I did do some typical intern stuff too. You know, I helped organize the material library. I did, you know, a lot of shipping of packages, the, the normal stuff that you would assume, which is all beneficial in the end because, you know, I still learned a lot and it was what I was expecting to do. So it wasn't like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think um, could, I know a lot of people are probably like, I don't have experience. I don't know. I'm really scared to start an internship. What, how is that for you? So I felt the same way because I, I worked retail and a little bit at a restaurant. So I'm just kind of like my only experience with school, but I think, and I, this will kind of vary, I think, between firm and just kind of who you work with. But I got super, super lucky just with the people that I work with because, you know, at the very beginning, I kind of told them, like, and they knew, like, as a student, as a student who's getting her bachelor's in your design, they know and they most should be aware that you aren't going to know everything. During my interview process, they really wanted to get to know me as a person and as a designer more than they wanted to just look at my projects. Awesome. Like I was, yeah, we still looked at my portfolio and they still asked questions, but it was more geared towards like, like who I was, how I would mesh with like the office vibe um, and who I was as a designer, what I thought my strong skills were. So I was very honest, like, you know, I, have a, I had a pretty basic understanding of the Revit, um, which they really liked because they are super Revit based. Um, and I told them, like, they asked me some questions specifically towards Revit. And I told them, like, you know, I could do a little bit of AutoCAD, a little bit of SketchUp, and that I was just really open to learn, which I think for them was a great thing because I don't like to say no to any opportunity. But I think just the fact that I was so honest and I'm still honest, when they ask me for, you know, help to do something, I will tell them, sure, I'd love to help. And if it's something I'm comfortable doing, I'll do it. And if it's something that maybe I don't know, like I'll tell them and you'll learn. And yeah. Like, yeah. And they'll like, okay, totally ask as many questions as you want. Like we'll help you. And I'm like, great, because I want to help. And obviously like I still need a little bit of help. And they have always just been so great at understanding that I'm a student and I am still learning. But I like to believe that, you know, most people when they are hiring students or younger designers that they have that understanding that hey, they are still learning because it is scary. And you know, everyone's been there. You're, everyone starts that way. So I think you just kind of have to just go for it, make sure that they understand where you're at and then you understand what they're expecting so that way you yeah. can communicate and just work so, out like yeah. the best way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So you applied to a lot of different um, internships. How did you find the internships or were you using a specific resource that you knew of or can you just share a little bit about how you found your internship? Yeah, so initially when it was still pretty early in the process, I was just googling design firms in Phoenix. Yeah. Um, and then I started narrowing it down because then I realized I wanted to do hospitality. So then I started looking for firms that either was hospitality or had like a hospitality like studio or section. Yep. Um, it kind of went from there. And then as the process got later, um, it was when the design school actually started sending those emails of like, hey, here's this firm. They're looking if anyone's interested. So then I would take the time to, you know, Google whatever this firm was that we got in the email, just see if it's something that was of interest to me. And then if it was, I'd apply. And if it wasn't, then I would just move on to the next one. And then eventually, too, sometimes firms would 
come to ASU um, to do like little meet and greets. So then I would try to go to many, as many of those as I can. Um, and then just really like talk to whoever was there because I knew like, here's my resume, let me talk to you, let me get you my name, my number, my face, like really just being personable so they know who I am and that you know, I just really want somewhere where I can learn and grow and be in a really great environment. And that's ended up how I, ended up being how I found the firm that I work at. And I remember the day that I was talking to one of the designers um, who had come to ASU. She was super, super awesome. Like, she was so passionate about her job. She was so passionate about the firm. Like, everything she was saying was just really resonating with me in a really positive way. And I was just like, this is amazing. Like, this is the one I want to go for. And obviously, I went through a lot of different interviews, but like, this was the one that I was like, this is where I want to work. Was like, vibe. Yeah, like everyone that I had met was just super nice, super positive, just very upbeat. And I was like, this is great. Like if this is how the whole office is, like this is exactly where I want to be. Like <laughs> Even networking events we went to during mm -hmm. our college years, we would go to all these um, IADA events or ASAD events. And they're always looking for the next oh, yeah. kid or student, you know, so <laughs> having your little like, we made like little business cards or something like super cheesy, but it was just yeah. something to give someone. Cause when you first go to your first networking event as a college student, you're kind of overwhelmed and you're oh, like, yeah. I met so many people, but they're not just going to remember my face. They need something tangible. So then we kind of caught on with the idea of making little note, like uh, business cards for ourselves and giving it out. So that was like a really great way. And I think that's also a way for people to get um, internships, hopefully. You know? Yeah, and that was actually how I ended up getting some of my interviews was at a IADA event because I had went and I met with a rep who was also on the board for IADA at the time. Okay. And we were talking to him and we were like, hey, like, yeah, we're students. Um, he was like, oh, so you guys are probably looking for internships. And we we're like, yes, we are, definitely. And he's like, oh, like, give me your name and number. I have some people looking. And he ended up sending our name out and our emails and contact information to some firms. And actually had one reach back out to me saying like, hey, I heard you're looking for an internship. I got like your name from this guy. Would you like yes. to come in and talk with me? And I was like, sure. <laughs> like I didn't like, actually expect anything to come out of it because like it was a really nice gesture and you just never know what's going to happen. And it like for something to like actually come out of it, I was like, wow, like, you know, I'm really happy I went to this event and like put myself out there because it is scary. And like as a student, just kind of barely delving into the world you're just kind of like oh all of these professionals right. like what's going on <laughs> so that was super nice and it was like really encouraging because obviously it wasn't a job that I ended up getting but it was still like a really good step in the right direction just to get my name out there and even like every interview that I had I just kind of took even if I like if I didn't get a job I took that's great practice like I got to see what kind of questions people asked, like what they were looking for exactly. So it was, yeah, the events are definitely super, super helpful. So, um, so you were an intern. Could you just talk about how long you were an intern for? Yeah, I think I was an intern for a little over a year. Okay. Um, so it was the start of the summer internship through when I graduated. Mm -hmm. And then I started full time a few weeks after, no, it was a week after the technical graduation date. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. So it was just a little over a year I was um, an intern. So how did the conversation start for, you know, you wanted to stay at this firm um, to continue growing there. How is it moving um, up to a higher position? Was What was that conversation? Did you go to them and ask them or was it that vice versa? So it was, it was a very initial conversation I had actually in my first interview was they were looking for interns that could potentially like move forward. Mm. So that was also just like another reason why I was like, this place is great. Like they really want to like train wow. their employees so that, and like grow with them. So I was like, that's amazing. And obviously like you can't, from that kind of conversation, you can't like expect to get hired because things could change, especially with everything that's happened here in 2020. Like you can't just expect it, but it was still like something that was frequently talked about, like, you know, 
after graduation, moving up, becoming a full-time employee. So when graduation did roll around, became again a, a little bit more of a serious conversation like, hey, like they asked me like how my experience has been and if it's something that I'm considering staying. And I was like, yes, like I'd love to stay. Um, you know, my internship was really successful, so I would definitely like to stay and continue forward. And then I eventually got the um, email outlining my, you know, my pay and my hours and my benefits. And I accepted very quickly because it was just something that I knew I wanted to do. Yeah, and it sounds like this um, firm really wanted to help you grow as a young designer and really help you shape your career. What was it like for um, just like mentorship opportunities or furthering your education or learning about maybe NCIDQ or other um, credentials that you can add on to your interior design career? What was that like for you? So for me, the people that I worked with um, definitely helped a lot just because again a lot of the designers in my office um, are very passionate about what they do so they're very passionate about a lot of the certifications especially NCIDQ um, so that became um, a topic of conversation in some of like our meetings was like hey like you know are you planning on becoming certified and when and how can we help you and the office is really big um, especially in the interiors department on like helping each other yeah. Um, like we have study groups and we have bi-weekly or monthly meetings about NCIDQ and how, you know, we can kind of support each other and help each other. And obviously we did learn a lot of this in school, but to see it like applied in real life has been super awesome, um, especially working somewhere that really wants their designers to grow and keep learning. Now that you're full time, are you able to... What is it like, um, cause eventually you'll hopefully be leading projects or in a project team. What is that dynamic like now that you're full time? Are you still assisting or are you kind of higher up than the intern level, you know, workload? Mm -hmm. What has that been like? Um, I've definitely been given a lot more responsibilities, um, which, you know, is, always been a big like learning curve especially because as an intern I was doing more than what I was expecting which was super awesome yeah they did trust me with a lot and gave me a lot of responsibilities as an intern so now full-time I have been given more um, opportunities to work on different projects um, I am still helping um in a way where like when someone needs something you know I help them but it's been kind of delegated to the one project that I'm on okay um, and then I work with kind of the same people now. Um, so instead of kind of like jumping around, I'm a little bit more focused on one project, seeing it from hopefully start to finish. So what do you wish the design school taught you that you know now? So <laughs> I've actually been thinking a lot about that. Um, and especially with this kind of topic for, of like internship to full time. One thing that I have learned just from like personal experience and things that I know now and Something that I used to say all the time when I was the manager of retail was no question is a stupid question. And I think that's something that the design school may want to focus a little bit more on teaching people just because it gets very intimidating, especially in school when you're trying to make these big, beautiful projects and you're trying to, you know, please a quote unquote client and do something that your professor is kind of, you know, urging you to do or they're recommending for you. So I think it's just the idea that no question is a stupid question. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the, what I used to say all the time was, you know, I'd rather take five minutes to answer your question and for you to do something right the first time, than later down the road, you didn't ask a question and now we're spending hours trying to fix whatever you may have, you know, made a mistake on or messed up on because you know, even if it seems stupid to you, it may not be stupid. It could end up being something super important that no one wants you to mess up on. Yeah. Um, and lucky enough, like for me, like where I work and the people that I work with, everyone's always super open to any questions that I have. And like, I know sometimes I, you know, ask a lot of questions and I feel like I'm being a, a bother, but it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's something that I feel like I should do because I don't want to mess something up and have someone, you know, find this mistake way down the road and it's just turned into like this big mess and I didn't ask a question. And, 
So it's better to just take the five minutes, ask your question, learn how to do it right. And you can apply it in the future than to spend hours later trying to fix whatever mistake happened. So I love that. That was great advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on today and talking about this topic. I think it's just so important. And I mean, now a lot of people like myself, when we graduated during this pandemic, we're still trying to find our way. So it's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>